Hello. Today I am sitting with Pastor Doug Yager. And we are sitting in the Calvin United Presbyterian Church of Scottsdale, PA. Thank you for taking time out to meet with me. I really do appreciate that. Well, first off, we're in Scottsdale, PA. Uh, a beautiful church, beautiful stained glass windows. Do you know about how old this church is, the building? This building is, goes back to 1898. The congregation goes back a few decades beyond that. Wow, you could not build this today no. if you had all the money in the world and all the, all the uh, craftsmen in the world. It is just a beautiful church. It is that. So what time are your services? Well, starting this Sunday, it'll be at 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. Through the rest of the summer until the, the Sunday after Labor Day. Okay. Normally we're 11 to 12. All right. Get that early summer start. That's terrific. So tell me about how you how you came to be a pastor. Well, I've had other careers, but I uh, felt a calling to become a pastor. I belong to a church in Uniontown, and you know the Presbyterian way is you don't belong to the church that you work at. So I work at this church, but I actually still belong. To I didn't know that. No. Church. Well, it, it makes sense when you think about the, the politics of dissolution or, or employment and whatever right. gets involved. But in any event, so I belong to a church in Uniontown, and we found ourselves looking for a pastor. Mm -hmm. So I chaired the dreaded pastoral nominating committee, which is something in the rules of the Presbyterian Church, where that's elected by the congregation to go out and search for a candidate. Now, we had 130 some people we applied to our so called job offering mm -hmm. at that church, and it took us about two, two and a half years mm -hmm. to select the final candidate who was unanimously approved by the congregation, which was a big load off of all of our minds for that one day for sure. Yeah, I'm sure. That done. But uh, I learned and I grew during that process because it was like, well, what do I expect in a minister? Uh, what qualities do I have to even justify me looking for a minister for all these people in this church? And in doing that, I started to fill in pulpits. They call it pulpit supply in the Presbyterian right. system. Pulpit supply, sure. Right, which means I think that's pretty universal in all churches. I thought so. Yeah. But they need somebody, they give you a call. Yeah. So I've been all over the mountains and out in the Westmoreland County and whatever, just a, a Sunday at a time. And then they asked me to come here uh, a little over two years ago, and I've been here since. So two years? So so in my third year, yeah. Third year, that's terrific. I, I'm sure you're being very well received, and and uh, I'm sure they appreciate you being here. Now, um, you're a family man. That's right. Uh, you have a, a wife and children. Do you want to give them a shout out? Well, sure. Patty, my wife, who's a reporter by trade. Oh, I didn't know that. That's true. No longer she's working in congressional staff these days. But, uh, well, that's very impressive. She works very hard. And uh, we have between us two sons and a daughter. And among us, we have seven grandchildren. Good. Yes, uh, I am a family man. You are. <laughs> if you look in the dictionary, family man is your picture and, and your brood. Well, that's tremendous. So if I were to come here on a Sunday morning, what could I expect? Are you traditional? Are you contemporary? What, what, what could people look forward to if they would come here at 10 o'clock in the summer, 11 o'clock in the, in the colder months uh, here to the Calvin United Presbyterian Church? We are, without a doubt, contemporary. Who is uh, very broad minded with her music, and we do have some contemporary songs that are sung by, either by the choir or the congregation under her leadership, and uh, that's a good thing. Yeah. But generally speaking, you'll find traditional hymns, you'll find traditional order of worship, the Presbyterian way, mm -hmm. and uh, close by a sermon from me, and then uh, wishing you well. Well, they save the best for the last, uh, the best for last, your, your sermon. I'll, I'll take that and, and the means it was given. Yeah, it was. It was given with the best of heart. I appreciate that. Well, sure. Yeah. What do you think the challenges are for your church and other churches in the area, or even all the churches across the globe? What are the challenges that we are facing in 2023? The challenge is that people don't go to church anymore. They yeah. can blame any number of things, and some of them are worthy of blame. Uh, soccer practice doesn't really have to start till 1 o'clock, does it? No, it does not. I no. don't suppose that it does. I know when I grew up, and I grew up in, toward the city, but we had Sunday evening fellowship for kids of certain age groups, and we had retreats, and we did things that, where the church was a cool thing to go to. Yes, yes. I think we need to get back to that. Yeah, we have a whole generation who don't don't even give church a consideration. That's like right. it's just not even on the radar. That's right. Well, and one of the things that we've done since uh, we've been in this church is to have liturgies from the congregation. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have any age requirement. 
find that even some of the older members of the congregation really appreciate the chance to get up and read the Bible in church. That means something to you. And the Bibles aren't written in cursive, so everyone can read. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, if you can read print, you can read the Bible. Yeah. Well, that's, ter that's terrific. That's wonderful. Um, so if we could just give an encouraging word, and you kind of already have, just give an encouraging word to anyone watching to come back to church. Well, if you are from this church and you're watching this, I would encourage you to come back because most of what you left is still really here. It's yeah. just not all functioning at the rate we would like it to function. Right. Uh, congregation gets discouraged that they've been here for so many years and we've just lost members. Well, we have, but all churches do that. Mm -hmm. All churches these days are losing way too many members. They're yes. falling yeah. out of favor with people. So what I would point out is this beautiful building still. Yes, we have payments and obligations, but we've been meeting those. We're, we're still alive. Uh, all the activities that have been there in the past can be here now. Some things have never gone away. Mm -hmm. Our women's club, for example, raises money for charity. They just had a, a, a smorgasbord and salad day, soup and salad uh, smorgasbord, and uh, well attended by the community. It was pretty packed in here that day. And, uh, that's what this church used to mean and apparently still means. Well, yes. It could right. mean to a much greater degree right. to the public at large. It's good for the fellowship. It's good for community. Sure, you can watch a church service online, but there's nothing, uh, you know, we're not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together, and we're, we're to come together and be brothers and sisters in Christ. So. That's true. And, uh, I heard somebody on the radio say the other day, how many of you kneel to pray at night? How many of you let your children see you kneel when you pray at night? Those are very good questions. Yeah, and... I won't try to answer them, but I will say if you come to church and bring your kids and they see you humbly, humble yourself before the Lord, right. then you've taught them something, or God has used you to teach them something. Right. Well, that's just wonderful. Thank you for giving me your time. Thank I you. appreciate that. Appreciate Until next time, God bless. Keep praying.